It's the summer of 2021, and I just convinced someone to join me on an adventure. An attempt to cycle 4,700 kilometers through every single country on the British Isles. The destination, a movie date at the most remote cinema in Britain. As England approaches the end of a long national lockdown, the results are proving positive, with COVID-19 infections down by 30%. A significant milestone on Sunday as the UK hit its initial target to deliver 15 million first doses of COVID-19 vaccinations. Pubs, restaurants and hairdressers reopened in England for the first time in three months. As England prepares to lift all remaining COVID-19 restrictions on what the media have called the Super Saturday of restrictions being eased. So who was this mysterious person crazy enough to do this with me? That's Jill. We'd been together about nine months, known each other for a year and a half, and had spent most of our relationship in lockdown. Hey, YouTube. <laughs> I'm Jill. Great to meet you. So, like many others, we were itching for an adventure. How are you finding the first test ride? And after a couple of vaccinations, courtesy of the NHS, we decided to grab a couple of bikes and set off on one. But neither of us had a clue about bike repair so we needed to learn whatever we could and fast. My knowledge stopped somewhere around repairing a puncture, and even that was a bit touch and go. But luckily, we had Nick. Thank, Thank you, Nick. You. Welcome, guys. Good Cheers. Luck. Cheers. Any last Cheers. words for the road? Uh, I'm sure you're going to be finding it. Brilliant. A local bike mechanic and neighbour who sorted us out with a two-hour masterclass before we left, so we'd be prepared for anything and everything that could go wrong. But hold on, where were we actually going? This is a tiny collection of rocks in the North Sea, 200 kilometers off the coast of Scotland. Somewhere here on Outskerries in the Shetland Islands is the Schoolhouse Cinema, the most remote cinema in the UK. The only indications of its existence, a marker on a map, and a single old news clipping from 2017. No website, no online presence, apart from a notice on Google Maps reading, temporarily closed. We'd been stuck inside for months during the pandemic, unable to go on a real date anywhere. So now that the world was opening up again, we couldn't just go down the road for our very first movie date. We needed somewhere a little more exciting. This is where we were headed. The planned route would take us from my hometown, Stenning, through England and over to Wales. Out of the UK to the Isle of Man, and then across the Irish Sea to Ireland up the famous Wild Atlantic Way to Northern Ireland and over to Scotland to finally finish here in Shetland. But it wouldn't just be about this. <laughs> or this. <laughs> Cycle touring would be a very socially distanced way to get around that took us off the beaten track, often to places we'd never heard of. We'd encounter brutal conditions and stunning scenery. But beyond that and the physical and psychological challenge of cycling so far, this was about the people we'd meet along the way. The incredible stories they had to tell and the kindness so many would show us that would help keep us going. It would be about understanding our home country and some of the nations that surround it deeper than ever before, by speaking to people we'd never otherwise cross paths with. So it would be more than cycling from point A to point B. And that would be the real adventure.
I set off tomorrow and today it's torrentially raining. <laughs> yeah, I actually prefer this to yeah. nice weather. Better for your skin, keeps it moist. Mm -hmm. Better like, for I, hydration I get, because you don't have to fill up water yeah, bottles. You just, you just look up and get, tilt your head up. And it doesn't age you as much. So I hope it's like this for the majority of the trip. Yeah, every day would be really nice. On the 18th of June, it was time to say goodbye to my family and begin our journey. Love you, sweetie. Love you. Okay. It's been lovely. It really has. Bye. See ya. Metre by metre, then kilometre by kilometre, we pedalled further from home. The Sussex scenery rolled by, slowly becoming less and less familiar the further we went. Until eventually, I didn't recognise it at all. Already, this was a massive change of pace. At the height of the pandemic, home meant the five miles around your house and strictly no further. An hour of fresh air a day, and maybe a chat with a neighbour over a garden fence, if you were lucky. Leaving all that behind after it had become the new normal was refreshing. A glimmer of the old world, before all this. I'm back on the road again. It's a pretty strange feeling after being stuck at home for so long during the pandemic, like everyone else, to now be on an adventure again. I realised the other day that I hadn't spent more than one night away from home for a year and a half and now I'm about to spend three, four months away which is on the one hand quite exciting because I love travelling and it's going to be really cool to see all these new places but on the other it's a little bit daunting because I've been in one place for so long and now I'm going off into unfamiliar territory again. We cycled west through all the coastal towns and cities I'd travelled past so many times before, but almost never stopped it. And already, on day one, a post on a Facebook group about our trip had scored us an invitation to stay with some locals. Lizzie, Steve, and last but not least, their pet tortoise, Frida, in Selsey. And how old is she? 60. 60. God. You've seen a lot of things in your If I look like this that. good at 60, I'll be happy. Adjusting to life on the road again didn't go totally smoothly, and we took a ton of scenic detours while we got into the swing of navigating. Any luck? Well, I don't know for sure, but we, there is a path on the other side. This is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, thank you. Well done. All right. My goodness. By day four, Jill had managed to get just a little bit sunburnt. It looks so bad on here. Wow. And I'd crashed my trusty drone that had made it through 14 countries with me unscathed into a tree. Shortly after that, I learned I was apparently allergic to something. Pollen, maybe? So hay fever, which I'd never had before, was a bit of a surprise. What's happened? Uh, I have a condition that I didn't know about. <laughs> so My body really... does not agree with the pollen in the air. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's hard to, a little hard to see <laughs> while cycling. And my antihistamines have Failed done you. jack shit. <laughs> 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 
We were a drone down and an allergy and some sunburn up. But that wasn't going to stop us, and we pressed on through the twists and turns of the new forest. Famous for its 5,000 horses which roam around freely. We stayed with some more kind strangers, like Lucy in Southampton, and stopped off with some of Jill's friends and family. Bye! Thank you for having us. This has been amazing. <laughs> having a nap at 11 something a year. <laughs> <laughs> We're having a day off here. When you think of travelling, it's so easy to neglect places closer to home. They're always there, so you can just visit next time. But if you're anything like me, next time doesn't always happen. So I'd barely seen any of the UK. And I was starting to realise that there was a lot I didn't know about the country I call home. And I'd taken this part of the world for granted for too long. We're in Wiltshire. But that would soon begin to change. And after a couple of hundred kilometres, it wouldn't be long before we came across our first story of the trip. Bristol was next. <laughs> 